Mali, a call for caution amid high hopes for a return to normalcy. Uh, for more, we turn now to our anchor at large, Demi Akimokaliele. Demi. Well, thank you, Vincent. An anti-conflict think tank based in Belgium warns against declaring victory in Mali despite recent successes against the jihadist groups by French and Malian forces in the north. Ahead of the deployment of a United Nations stabilization force to Mali, Director Comfort Arrow of the International Crisis Group's Africa program warns that northern Mali remains a highly unstable region. Speaking at a news conference Tuesday, Aero says the force will be deploying in a highly dangerous zone as attacks by Islamists continue. The deployment of the future UN stabilization force in a very um, dangerous territory where the enemy is not clear. Um, there is no peace agreement. It's not clear who the enemies are. And also, um, it's, the situation goes way beyond Mali. France has begun to withdraw some of its 4,000 member force from the West African nation. It had intervened to help Malian forces drive back an offensive by Islamist militants who had seized two-thirds of the country in the desert north. The UN Security Council is considering a draft resolution to approve the creation of a 12,600-strong UN peacekeeping force named MUNISMA, which would take over from a UN-backed African force currently in place with around 3,800 troops on the ground. 1,000 French soldiers will remain in Mali to make up a rapid reaction force that will operate alongside UN peacekeepers and be tasked with tackling remaining pockets of extremists. Aero warns that claiming victory at this point is premature. Increasing attacks in the north have reinforced the risk of French and African forces becoming entangled in a guerrilla war as they try to help Mali's weak army encounter the Al-Qaeda-linked rebels. We're careful to announce that there's some kind of victory over the jihadist groups. These are groups that are highly mobile. Um, they're very nomadic. And I think the French will be the first to say that they haven't gotten rid of the jihadists. And in fact, that at the one level, it's a tactical victory for the French, but they haven't been able to push or, or eradicate um, these various groups in, in, the, in, in northern Mali. And in a sense, most of them may have retreated to the mountainous Areas. Mali is scheduled to hold elections in July, but Aero echoed warnings from experts of problems from insecurity, hundreds of thousands of people still living in refugee camps, and a stalled political process. Elections are necessary to end the, the transition, but they can't be at any cost. That while we recognize that there has to be an, an attempt to bring back a semblance of order and democracy in the country, um, that, the, that the moment may not necessarily be ripe for, any, um, for elections and that a number of steps need to be taken before that process. As a result of the political strife, aggravated by prevailing food insecurity due to the ongoing drought affecting the Sahel region, the United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, says in addition to the 282,000 people displaced in Mali, there are more than 175,000 Malian refugees in surrounding countries, with 75,850 in Mauritania, more than 49,000 in Burkina Faso, and some 50,000 in Niger. UNHCR expects an additional 45,500 refugees during the remainder of the year, based on existing rates of arrival. Now, to discuss this issue further, we, are in, we invited reporter Modibo Ndebele of VOA's French to Africa Mali Kura service. Welcome to our show, Modibo. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for being here. So first I want to address the issue of the refugee crisis, which seems really extensive. Thousands of people have been displaced internally as well as in neighboring countries. What are you hearing about how they're being treated? I think uh, the treatment of refugees is a very big issue in Mali because according to United Nations Refugee Agency, we have uh, almost 300,000 people, mm -hmm. and most of them they are really lacking uh, basic. foods, basic necessities like mm -hmm. food, even to eat. And Shelter, this is water. shelters, water, mm -hmm. if you want, like the main one. And uh, it's really a big concern because when you go down to the south, people are still fighting for political reason. And in the north, mm -hmm. we have uh, jihadis, jihadis and uh, we for guerrilla tactics of a war. So it's a really uncomfortable time for Mali. What are you seeing or hearing about what is the most effective way out of the situation. These elections that are being proposed in July, is that a possible solution? 
Honestly speaking, I don't think that it's really possible to hold election uh, for this upcoming July for Why not? many reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, many countries we are pushing for the election, and I really understand we cannot really have a long-term uh, transition. Mm -hmm. But those countries we are doing the same thing, they are doing, doing this in the name of the rule of law. Such but tell as, us what are the pertinent issues? Is it because yeah. of security? Is well, it because people, of lack of... The main one is uh, how can you organize the election when you have like uh, one of your region is still occupied? Mm -hmm. Because the Malian constitution, especially the Article 118, say we cannot organize any kind of referendum mm -hmm. when a part of the country is under occupation. And I think in the name of the rule of law, the same country we are defending democracy cannot push Mali because we might have a lot of negative side effects. Mm -hmm. For instance, in Mali now, more and more people are raising voice to say this is not really the right time to uh, organize election. A lot of political leaders, mm -hmm. such as the former uh, president of the Malian National Assembly, he clearly says it will be better to postpone the election maybe a few months. Now, um, on the issue of elections, is a long, drawn-out issue. It will take a long time. I want to talk about, say, the Azawad, the National Movement for the Liberation of Azawad. How does it fit into the Malian future? I, I think uh, I see them like Malian, like everybody else. And uh, to me, the best way to really handle this situation is reconciliation. But when people talk about the, the national movement of liberation of Azawad, it's not really representative of Tuareg. And when you talk about North, it's not only Tuareg. We have Bela, we have Bozo, we have Fulani, we have Sangai. And more and more Tuaregs are even signing petition to say, we don't think that those people are the right representative for our people. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I think the Malian people should engage negotiation with the communities living in the North instead of those political movements. Because a lot of things they are doing, they use propaganda. Propaganda, and it's not for the good of everybody. Yes. What about what the president last week um, or recently in, set up, the Dialogue and Reconciliation Commission? Does that help towards the kind of discussion and dialogue you're talking about? I think it would be, it's a good thing. The commission has uh, 33 members, and uh, we have uh, people from all over Mali. But the only issue, again, as I just pointed out, is more people are really focused about... Uh, uh, election, even this commission, some people are even also contesting. The people we are member of for the commission, I can even tell you, we have a... One is a former defense minister. Yeah, we have a, an entity in Mali, I think it's an organization for northern people. They really don't like the way this commission has been set up because okay, they so say they don't have any kind of representative and also the okay. black tamashek, mm -hmm. they think uh, because they are, since they are not a part of this commission, and they, they don't no. think they are really a, a representative. Ongoing problems. Hopefully you'll come back and yeah, give us hopefully. some more enlightenment on the situation. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Debo Debele is a reporter with VOA's French to Africa Mali Kura service.